Oh my god, your poor dad. Do you remember how to do this? Welcome back to Your Poor Dad. You can't choose your sisters, but you can choose your podcast. So thank you for joining us and being the fourth brand sister. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome. But you thought you got rid of us, but you didn't. Can't shake us. You, we're just like sisters. Like you can get in fights with your sisters, but like they're still your sisters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what, at the end of the day, they're still your sisters. Stuck with us. Just like we're stuck with each other. Just like we were stuck with each other in Europe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys slept in the same room every night. Not every, every night. No, one Not night we did it. One night we did one it. One night I had to sleep in mom and dad's room. Which was also my room. No, your room was not. Oh, wait. You're. <laughs> yes. Okay. The last time we saw you guys. Was right. Right before, before Europe. Our trip. Because our last episode came out on, as Bailey let me know, 9-11. And we don't talk about 9-11. No. According no, to Mariah we don't. According to Mariah Carey. Actually, we all literally talk about 9-11 each year. And I don't think she she knows that. But so we went to Europe. We have a lot to unpack here. So how do we how do we want to go about this? Do you want to give up like updates? Do you want to talk about Europe? I feel like there's so many things that have happened since the last time we recorded. So should we just go in chronological order? <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Europe and... What happened to you right before we got to Europe? Oh my so God. it was a shit show from the very beginning because Bailey and I, we had everything planned, whatever. We were the, we were supposed to go from Austin to Dallas and then fly with our parents. Jade was flying on her own, but we were all going to meet up, you know, in Germany. Okay. So the day that we are leaving, my dog Roman gets the craziest allergic reaction. I mean, like, overnight like his nipples were so his puffy nipples were puffy just like you in like fifth grade <laughs> <laughs> he had he had welts just all over his body and i'm supposed to board him my dogs rarely get boarded maybe max for a weekend this was going to be for 10 days and i could not board him without some kind of medication he has allergies he's a frenchie so i'm trying to call his vet just can you please call in a prescription so i can get it they're like, no, he needs to be seen. Okay, can I'm coming right now. Oh no, we don't have an appointment till three. That does not work for me. Like he's been there in the two months before that, he had been there four times. Right. So this <laughs> so is not just like, like you know him. Call in the medication. Call in the medication. Oh, we you want my dog to suffer. And we know what works. Right. It worked last time. Just do it. So, anyways, they're saying no. And I can promise you, I'm not gonna put them on a blast, but they do not have my business anymore because I was so distraught. We had a flight to get to. I'm, I go to three different places. I'm calling 12 places. One emergency vet was like, she felt for me. She's like, go here, Cedar Park. So it's way I north. I didn't know you had to go yes. to Cedar Park. Cedar Park's like 30 to 40 minutes away. It was way north and they were unbelievable. They were so helpful. They cared about him so much. They gave me, I didn't realize how amazing they were they even gave me a goodie bag as i was leaving and inside the goodie bag was a bottle of wine a new custom dog tag with his name on it like all of these like things whatever um they get him a shot a steroid shot all these all these things medication whatever and um i i feel okay drop him off and we're getting close like down to the wire for our flight and we're freaking out smacky you guys remember Smacky. She was so nice. She's like, drive your car. I will pick park in the closest parking lot. That's usually like 27, whatever a night. She's like, we will come pick up your car. Oh so my gosh. I know. So nice. So they, they did that. We get there and then our flight's delayed <laughs> and it gets delayed like three or four times. And by the third time, that's when, by the time it would arrive, our other flight would be leaving. Mm-hmm. And we're like shit what are we supposed to do mom i don't know really how mom was able she had to finesse several different flight connections for us and she was somehow able to do it because the we were talking to the agents there and they basically were like can't help you she was like beep boop on the computer and she says oh this is weird don't know what that means yeah that's a train it's like okay you're supposed to be guiding us. I can't go around and read your computer. Oh, the agent was doing that? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. They, they got us on 
the last poor Bailey was about to kill me because she was hungry. And every time she would get in line for Chick-fil-A, I'm like, we got to go to the next place. I truly was about to kill you because the first time it made sense. And we like got there in the nick of time. The second time, Paige is a very anxious flyer and it was already anxious. We already missed our thing. And now we're going to like fly to London to do whatever. Everything was up in the air. It was very stressful and I was starving. And I said, okay, well, now that we have our flight, we're there, we're going to start boarding. The flight's going to start boarding in 10 minutes. We're group nine. I'm going to get Chick fil A. I'm going to go get food. I can see the gate. Everything's fine. I start walking that way and Paige goes, Bailey! <laughs> I can hear her yelling at me from down the hall. Oh my hall. god, you're psycho. And I was like, what? And they she said, start- we're gonna board. And I was like, I- I'm starving to death. Like, this is gonna be so much worse if I don't eat. And she was like, we're gonna go to 7-Eleven. So we got, I got as much food as I could. I got a cheesecake. I got a burrito. I got a, <laughs> Ew, uh, like, what lunchable. The fuck? From 7-Eleven, I'm trying, I don't know what I'm gonna want. I'm about to get on like a nine hour flight. I was starving i hadn't eaten all day okay, yes so this was my bad and i'm sorry for that but here's what's worse because this was a flight that we weren't supposed to be on mom got us on thank god we were in the very 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 last row in the middle so it was a we row we didn't of, know any of this at this point i just wanted to eat so i know we watched, i was past you that you wanted to watch all the so people like, get on you board. guys couldn't even like lean your chair no, back and the the biggest problem was the way you're supposed to be able to put your stuff in the seat in front of you for whatever reason i'm guessing it's because it was the last row like not there was four of us there but there was only like two or three in spots. front of you yeah, yeah so bailey and i basically had to like sit with our feet like up the entire all nine hours and so we would take turns like i would lay my <laughs> tray table out and bailey would lay on it and then she would lay her tray table out and then i would lay on it it was and we did not get up one time what? like we did not we did not get up to go to the bathroom because we were just so uncomfortable it was gonna be there was like a man on either side of us we couldn't like mm. i brought my computer because i had so much work i needed to do and i couldn't like i couldn't do anything with my little elbows so, my elbows so that's just you guys other. so you, that was just how it started you ended up getting to salzburg that's the main point uh, yes yes thank god so i meet up with mom and dad in the airport in um frankfurt and which should have been all five of us meeting up in the airport and dad is like literally like hunching over with this like huge backpack and he's like i had to get two bottles of jack daniel from duty free and i was like why and he's like because we can't get jack daniels in austria (laughs) he was like freaking out so i was like okay and then like he's pacing he's so stressed like he was as stressed for page and you as page was Mm -hmm. but like there but also dad is kind of like no offense like useless in these kind of situations like He's not going like, to be the one to like, like be on the phone with the yeah, airline. At least I I stress, but I'm taking action. Right. Like he stresses and he's like, <laughs> and he doesn't know what to do. So it's like mom is, mom is like kind of like doing some like weird shit, trying to get to like some random Lathonza desk. I'm like, I need a beer. <laughs> and finally we like get to Austria and it's gorgeous. Everything is okay. I don't think we need to get into the nitty gritty yeah. of every single aspect of our trip, but our trip was Salzburg, uh, Munich, Paris home and day two in Salzburg Paige and I are like literally cats and fucking dogs fighting like we could not stop fighting for the life of us yeah (laughs) yeah it was bad and it was like every little thing that I have ever done to you in your life mixed with like all of this travel anxiety it just like I was irritating you and then I was reacting yeah well from my memory um <laughs> i thought like oktoberfest was like me doing that like i was oh, like that's what i was talking about i was like yeah like we were, i was like, like going in no we were like at oktoberfest in drindles which are just like traditional like german garb and, and we like, looked cute we looked cute and we started off the day so fun we like did this drive through the german countryside it was gorgeous and then we're just like sitting there and like 
we were there the first day of Oktoberfest, so they didn't tap the keg until 12, but we had gotten there at like nine. Yeah. And I honestly thought that we'd be able to have like other beer. Right. Or like some other type of drink. But we couldn't. It was so no we're alcohol. sitting there stone cold fucking sober, which was our first mistake. We should have brought like roadies in the car or something. Honestly, that could have like been a good idea or a bad idea for you and I, but we're just sitting there eating these like terrible German meats like the gray meat that they served us. It was just in the rock hard pretzels and the rock hard pretzels. Like I thought this was your one job is to make like good pretzels. Like you're fucking Germany. It was terrible food. And Paige is just like, <laughs> I'm, just like I'm glad we're here. We have a couple hours until um, the festivities start. And here are some grievances. <laughs> I'd like air, to bring yeah, everyone's let me attention. My grievances. <laughs> let me tell you everything that you've done to bother me the last year. Okay. It was really like one or two things. But it was like one or two things, but like there was but a thesis. De- like, what is it when you're like, or um, <laughs> opening a wound and you want to like get everything out? Well, like, to be, it? To, be com- to be completely fair, when I first brought it up, what I didn't realize was going to be your trigger is when I call me the most when judgmental I said, person. Yeah. <laughs> when I said that you were like the most judgmental, I thought that was something that you knew. And so, because I was bringing up like the topic and I was like, yeah, I know you're the most judgmental person, but like you can't do this and this. And you were like, I, you were, you seemed shocked that you, that I would refer to you as a judgmental person. And I was like, wait, well, that's not the part that I thought was going to be no, the argument. Here's the caveat. You said I was the most judgmental person you've ever met in regards to somebody's looks, which is just like categorically unfa- like it's untrue. Like I judge people's like decisions with their looks like Taylor Swift style. We'll get into that. Like people's haircuts, like things like that. But like, oh my God, his nose is disgusting. Like I don't say shit like that. I didn't say you did. But that's like what it means. Like when you say people's looks, like you should say people's styles. Cause like a haircut is a style. Okay. Cause you can control a style choice. But I I said you were the most judgmental person. Well, because I made fun. Let's just be honest. I made fun of somebody's haircut. Yeah, and that's, that's... I just have a lot of opinions. But, like, th- th- like that specific topic, isolated, like, you... Eat, like, your whole TikTok is basically, like, you judging, like, things, things and people. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's why like, I didn't think that was the thing that was going to, like... Well, because you, you were saying I, like, make fun of every single person you've ever dated's looks. You do. No, I don't. <laughs> here I, comes Switzerland over here. I could not be more Switzerland because um, IDK, because you said that about me too. About that person. (laughs) Okay, let's move on. So we're fighting over that. Then the next day. I thought we were fine the next day. No, the next no, day was when it was the worst but, day. <laughs> but only at nighttime. Yeah. No, the, the next day we were fine. Yeah. I thought we, we were, recovered. But then at night, we had just like had it with each other like I had it with you you had it with me and we had to be separated at dinner because we were screaming at each other in this restaurant in Salzburg it's like this old restaurant that Mozart used to go to and we were fighting over like what we were gonna order because I was being bossy and you like hate when I'm being bossy and like everyone else is kind of being annoyed with me but we were day drinking so we were all just like kind of annoying but then me and Paige start screaming at each other and the mom is like so sensitive she's like oh my god get over here like I don't like watching my girls fight and blah 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 and then dad kept saying can I just eat with my wife and dad was wasted can I just have a meal with my no, wife dad didn't even know that Paige and I had a fight at the <laughs> restaurant like dad heard it from me the next morning no I know but then he was like I didn't know that was going on I had no idea I was like why, why do, do you think-, think mom had to leave to go attend to you guys i know and he was like i'm not leaving without my wife he kept saying my wife and i'm like yeah we get it mom you mean my mom yeah like (laughs) sandy like everyone knows who you're talking about you don't need to like double down you know that they thought that you were gonna flip the table the waiter did no he didn't apparently he told um mom or something that he was like oh that's like on tv so like something like that and i was like oh that's actually my people yeah he thinks you're Teresa. I know, but we had no food at the time, so it would have been fine if I flipped it. Yeah. It would have just been, like, water. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we had to be separated, and then we kind of, like, steered clear of each other for, like, the rest of the trip for, like, a couple days. Luckily, this trip was so long, and there were so many people on the trip. The trip, I was gone for 13 days. You guys were gone for 11, and we had 
at any point, 12 to 13 people with us the entire trip. And we all stayed in the same house in Salzburg, Munich, and Paris. And that was like an experience. <laughs> yeah. So For I asked because I think we're the problem. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't necessarily mind the people. What I r- really minded is the lack of thought of food. So it's like if we're going to be in a house with so many people, with 13 people, you have to have a, a game plan for like, we need to go to the market right when we get there to make sure that we have enough food for breakfasts and things like that. 13 people is a lot of people. Yeah. And I just feel like that part was a little overlooked because the other the main thought was probably we'll get something when we're out because most of the days all of the days we we were gone the whole time right but the biggest problem that i had is that the food was just never a thought and so it's like we would be out on these tours for like seven hours or something for days for the entire day and it's like it got to the point where anytime we would pass something, it's like, here's a, get a baguette here. If you want. Yes, I want. No, because like, I don't know when I'm going to eat. It again. was like, we're running by this food store and like, maybe you could, whatever you grab and go like it, like you didn't even have time to like look anywhere. Mm-hmm. So Munich honestly was like the sleeper hit for me. I did mm. not expect to like Munich so much. I don't know why in my mind I just pictured like cold Russia, like communist, like terrible you started world war ii like all this shit but it was actually like a very nice welcoming country like city i think the glockenspiel was so fucking cool like oh the the it, the glockenspiel is kind of like um a cuckoo bird oh, yeah clock, but, but like so cool massive scale because it's like at the top of a church yeah no i loved munich i loved austria i loved austria and germany i thought those were well, every you, place we went was like so beautiful. You did love Paris until you didn't. I and I you were on a high. Here's in Paris. the thing: You're so I still excited. stand. I do. I am really thankful that we did the Eiffel Tower. I loved yeah. the Eiffel Tower during the day and at nighttime. Yeah, and I loved being in Paris. But like, I did think I was like, I I love this environment. I loved the vibe, but I did think that it was way too much like new york or something i think i was want i was hoping that it was going to be a little more like special or something Mm -hmm. it was still kind of like dirty and like you know what i mean well i think also we didn't get to like explore like the cool parts of paris because we were in all the touristy parts so we got to paris and we like flew it it kind of was like a treacherous travel day when it really wasn't that far like it was a Mm -hmm. two-hour flight and it was just kind of like how like drugged up i was that day We were because Paige had to take we like took this windy fucking cab ride from munich to the airport or from where we stayed in munich to the airport and then like so we were all kind of like feeling sick we had all kind of drank the night before and then it just was kind of like a treacherous day so we kind of lost a day and of like mom and i have sightseeing. really bad motion sickness anyways yeah so then the next day was like our sightseeing day and i didn't realize like until we got to europe how much fucking shit mom and angie had packed in each day like at 8 a.m they were like okay well we're all gonna go out? Well, no, because the reason we didn't realize is because they would say we're gonna go tour Cinderella's castle. End of discussion. Yeah, we're like, okay, check that day's done. And what that? No, but at first we didn't know that. And yeah. then it's like, oh, so what that means is we leave at eight because we have to, you know, takes three hours to get Six. there, and th- and then we're there for, you know, it's it's yeah. just like a whole thing. So it's like, oh, so we're not just gonna go tour Cinderella's castle. Right. So the next day in Paris was like our own your guys' only real full day in Paris, really. Because we had a tour plan the next day that Paige and I didn't end up going on. So we get up. Everyone's like leaving the house at 8 a.m. We're like, oh, fuck. Like, we got to get ready. We leave the house. It's pouring rain. We're like having drinks. So all we had at this point in our belly were, was just like champagne and a croissant. And we go we go to the Eiffel Tower. It's kind of like not the best area of Paris. It's like kind of just like touristy. It's kind of just like blah. We go to the Eiffel Tower. We spend a lot of time there. That was pretty cool. Then we meet up with everyone. Go drink some more. Oh, we're also drinking at the Eiffel Tower. And we like shove like a sandwich down our throats to kind of eat. Because we're just like, oh, like we'll just eat. But like little did we know that was going to be like the only food Mm -hmm. that we had that day. 
So then we go, we meet up with everyone because the guys didn't go. We have like more drinks. And then we go tour the catacombs, which is so fucking weird because it's literally bones like everywhere. It was so cool though. It was cool. It was really cool. But like, I just didn't imagine us being able to like, like be in such direct contact yeah. with the bones. Like they weren't even behind any glass. It was just like bones. Yeah. I thought it was going to be behind glass. We're just breathing in whatever is like death. there. Yeah. We're breathing in death. Remember when mm. we like heard them then, like rustle? You could hear it was it. like just me and Jay. We were kind of trailing. We're listening to the, the guided the tour. Audio, the guided tour. And so we're, that we're waiting. It's just us two. And then we hear like a, a rustling of the bones and we're like, well, it's just us two. And we're doing that thing where it's like, cause we don't really like make up as sisters. It's kind of, we just like ease back into each other's <laughs> lives. And at that point in the trip, we were like easing back into each other's lives, like being nice to each other. Like we used to when we were little, like, Oh Paige, look at this. <laughs> wow, that's like a peace offering. <laughs> Paige, look at this bullet hole in the skull. It was like a peace offering. And then we go take a train to the Champs-Élysées, which is like the rodeo, rodeo, rodeo drive. <laughs> and I lose my fucking mind. That, which is my head started for spinning. you in in those situations oh i was like it, when i get to a point where like i am done with something i cannot see straight i cannot make a decision to save my mind i'm like i want to go here no i want to go here i don't want you guys to come no i do want you to come like i was like i just need to eat and my mom was like well we actually want to go see the arc to triumph and then it's too expensive to eat around here and i was like that's the thing that drove me I crazy. Need to eat. I was like, I don't care how much it costs. I want food. Yeah. I was really mad at Jade because I asked her before before anything. I said, okay, I need you to be my ally. We're gonna like, I really want to like have a food memory here. Mm-hmm. Like I want to just yeah. be able to like pop into a place. We can break off. We're adults. Like let's like be able, like let's be flexible. Like they keep saying that we can break off if we want to. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, Jade, this is your time. Do you want to like go get but something to eat? And I was like, think straight. But I don't know. Like all eleven pairs of eyes like turned to us, and it was just and like, Jade was like, cute. I don't care. And well, like, so it was. It is rare for Jade to be the one that gets hangry, and so she was. She was there, and but she also you were really upset about your pants situation, and so mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, we're gonna go. You're gonna go to was it h&m or zara zara you're gonna go to zara with mom you're gonna look at some pants and we're gonna go take the pictures and and then we're coming back and we're gonna eat and then we're gonna eat yeah but then i'm like mom's like breathing over my shoulder and zara no, just mom following was being me around. a fucking delight i know but then she's just like following me around and i'm just like okay i gotta like get out of here so anyways that was that day but then at night Paige was like hey like I really want to see the Eiffel Tower all lit up and like sparkly and like sparkly and like blah 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 like we've been on the metro all day like we've gone all over Paris all day on the metro like we're let's just go ride the metro we already know how to get there let's go to the Eiffel Tower take some pictures have a glass of wine and then go back so we get there we it's the only time it's just the three of us literally the entire trip so we had like a really we split a bottle of wine we had some escargot it was like such a fun sister moment we took some pictures by the eiffel tower like we saw it like light up and it was just really cute so we're like okay let's go home let's go find a bar close to home let's like ride the wave then we're on the metro two stops before and i i can't stress this enough like we had our bags on like we were on guard the entire time we're in Paris because we know how big of a pit pocket city it is and so we're like okay like we have our shit on us like phones in hand shit on us we're like getting closer to about to get about to get off the door or the door we're right by the door because we're about to get off at our stop and Paige has her phone out and this guy comes around me, reaches around me, because I had my phone right here and mine was closer, but I think yours might have been just out more. He grabs her phone and like runs. And we like, I, I let out a little yelp. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying to open the doors. Ba- Bailey's trying to like hit the, the exit button. Like none of that fucking works. So the guy's gone. And we're just sitting there stunned. Like I was so stunned. I was like, my brain only registered a phone is gone. And then I looked down and I was like, oh, my phone's still here. So it must have been her phone. <laughs> and you were there. And then Paige starts screaming at us. <laughs> She's saying, find my iPhone. <laughs> and we like, we didn't know what to do. And like, 
we were actually live on your poor dad's Instagram. So I go on my Instagram and since it's such a lag, I'm screen recording the, cause it, when I opened up the live, <laughs> we were still live. <laughs> He's like, he just stole the phone. But then like I screen yeah. record it and then you could just see the phone get jostled and us be like, well, everyone on our Which, live. By the way. So it's like my arms like out in the metro. Jade's like also trying to like open it. Bailey's literally pressing. Did it say like emergency open or emergency? Like it emergency. said, it okay. said emergency. So Bailey's pressing the button. None of that works. So if you guys are ever in that situation, um, the button doesn't work. So yeah. the doors are not going to reopen. So um, that sucks. Yeah, so that was pretty, that was not a great end to the trip because then we have to go back and we're like tracking Paige's phone and like Paige didn't remember her uh, iCloud password right away. So she was like putting in other passwords then it like blocked her from Well, her. I think it was because like between you were doing something and mom was doing something and I didn't know my password at first. And then mom was like, when I, when I didn't know my f- password the first time, mom was like, okay, I'm going to lock your Apple ID down, which like doesn't seem like a bad idea, except they were like, okay, your Apple ID will be locked out for 30 days. I was like 30 days. That's insane. Yeah. So we were kind of like just scrambling at that point. Cause we didn't know what this person was going to do with Paige's phone and so that was really scary. So we were up very, very late. It was like very jarring because it was like, it's different when somebody like makes contact with you to steal your shit. Like, especially because we were warned so much about Paris, but like we were never warned that it was just going to get like taken out of, your, out of hand. your hand. So let that be known that, uh, that's the shitty thing about Paris. Paris is such like a magical city, but it is really, really fucking annoying. You have to be on guard at all times because people are just so shitty. Yeah, it was really nice. That one guy was like, oh my God, I saw what happened. Like, can I help you? Whatever. He was like, well, we didn't trust him either. Yeah, I was going to say. I didn't trust him, but he was so... I think he was genuinely surprised that the... um, We went to the information desk. He is translating for us English and French. Obviously, we don't speak French. And he was... I think he was jaded from the whole experience. He was like, thinking that the person was going to help us. And that person was like, okay. He's like, uh, yeah, welcome to fucking Paris. Ever Everyone's heard of shit it. Yeah. gets stolen. Well, yeah. And the next day when we were in a convenience store, the guy was like, oh, were you by the doors? Yeah, because we were about to get off. He's like, yep, that's. And it's very common that people, you know, would get like punched. And then so we didn't get punched. So that's yeah. good. But it's a very common thing that um, they're just people there that fucking suck. Just suck. Yeah. So that kind of sucked. You guys, we were supposed to do this like tour the next day, which Bailey, you took one for the team and went with everyone on the tour. 630 in the morning. That was very early. Yeah. And then the next day after that, you guys left. And then mom and dad and I all had like a cute little trip after that. Because it was my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, And I know that there was actually kind of a lot of people who were asking me because I was really confused about the whole my phone was stolen in another country thing. Like, what do I do? What are the steps I need to take? A lot of people were like, please let me know what you're supposed to do in this situation. So I'm just going to say if that happens, you need to put your phone, log into your Apple ID um go to your find my iphone and you need to mark it as like put it in like lost mode and and then put it in erase mode and do not you'll have an option it'll say if this phone is connected to the internet do you want to put in a phone number so that phone number will be alerted like hey this old phone has been connected to the internet blah 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 do not ever put a phone number in there um and then there's a second option you can put a message so when i put it as a race mode um the message i put was this phone is stolen and so when someone connects it that's what the message is going to say and then people have already started like reaching out to me um to try to get back into my apple id because what they want is to erase my to to reset my phone to factory settings so they can sell it do not disconnect your phone from your Apple ID because that's how they will be able to, you know, get in and unlock everything. So good luck. So so what you're saying is that if your phone is not taking, taken out of loss mode, they can't erase it? So you, so you, 
so what I did, I first put it as loss mode and then I put it in erase mode. So, oh, okay. so what that means is like the person who took it, like turned off the phone. Mm-hmm. So they can't get in without my password or my face ID. Mm-hmm. Right. But they can hack it, whatever. Um, but if it's in erase mode, when they do get it open and if whatever, when they're connected to the internet, um, it will just erase all of the contents of my phone. Oh, okay. And so the only way you can get back into it is if you have my Apple ID, email, and password. Got it. So that's what they'll text you because they are able to get the phone number that's associated to it. And so they'll text you pretending to be Apple Mm -hmm. and saying like, we were alerted that this phone, like an iPhone 14, whatever, has been stolen, like, can you confirm this? And so if you respond to the message, you're screwed. So don't ever respond. And if you click one of the links in the message, they will automatically be able to get into your Apple ID. So, well, there you go. Do not click on anything. Do not respond. I had already talked to Apple and Verizon and they were like, we, they flagged everything that they needed to flag on their end. And they were like, we will not be sending you these types of messages. So if you're getting them, it's not us. Like don't Mm -hmm. do anything. Um, so yeah, just don't remove the device from your Apple ID. Don't click on anything and make sure you put it in erase mode. So when they are, my phone's currently in Morocco. So isn't that wild? (laughs) What? Yes. It's in Morocco. And it's so weird because we could see where the phone was going. Uh huh. And so Paige and I woke up and we were like, we're going to go find this fucking phone. Yeah. And then Angie was like, you're not looking. Yeah. Yeah, You're not. Our friend is like uh, a badass. And she was like, look, you're not doing that. Like, it, and it really didn't make any sense because we saw it was at like an apartment building and like, who knows what fucking place it was going to be in. And Paris is already sketchy. Like, it didn't make sense for us to die for a phone. Yeah. So one of the biggest things now, this this is going to be a segue. One of the biggest things that happened in while well, I was in Paris was um, and I didn't have my phone and Paige didn't have her <laughs> phone. And it was actually happening at a motherfucking Bears game. I know. <laughs> is Taylor Swift and, and Travis, Travis Kelsey, Kelsey made their relationship very public. Very public. I was shocked. I was with mom and dad and I was like, oh my God. Because we were seven hours ahead. So like we we're getting all the news like so much later. And I'm like, Taylor Swift at the Chicago Bears Kansas City game. And dad's like, what? <laughs> And I was like, this is so funny that Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey chose to make their relationship very, very public when he's playing the Bears. Because he Mm -hmm. was probably like, okay, which game do I want her to come to to make me look the best? (laughs) We're going to do it against the Bears. Mm -hmm. And we say that as Bears fans, obviously. Right. But, okay, so now this is, she's been to what, four games? Because today we're recording, it's Sunday. And she just came to the, who are they playing? right now i knew that uh the chargers okay but they're in kansas city because we just saw taylor Swift. okay and i want to ask your guys opinions on this because we got pictures i was fucking right it is the chargers i am amazing um so taylor swift was at travis kelsey's game travis kelsey's house pre-gaming before we don't know if she was pre-gaming but she's just like watching the other games with members of Travis's family, other people. Somebody posted a picture. It's some like old football legend. He posted a picture of um, him and Taylor. So we knew Taylor was at Travis Kelsey's house because the guy was literally like, I'm at Travis Kelsey's house. So here's my question. Like, okay, obviously Taylor is in Kansas City. Is she staying at Travis's house? Is she staying at a hotel? Getting, it makes more sense that she would be at Travis's house because I think it would be, a logistical to secure, to nightmare secure. Yeah. to go from like hotel to house to whatever. But it's like, okay, is she at the stage in the relationship where she's like, okay, I have the keys guys. We're getting in the bus to go to the game. I'm going to lock up or like who's locking up the house. Maybe it's a keypad situation. Okay. But like, is she, but you still kind of have to have a sweeper who's like getting everyone in and it's yeah, usually no, like the girlfriend. No. Cause they're ushering her into the car right before the car exits the gate. And then there's somebody who's going to be, okay, you know, everyone's out. Let me just, you know, make sure the windows are closed. The doors yeah. are locked. That's not her. 
Yeah. But not because... But I also think that Taylor likes cosplaying as, like, a normal girly. So I think she, like, probably, like, is like, okay, I'm going to lock up. And then they have someone who's actually, like, walking behind her, like, actually locking up because she's, like... No, okay, a she's superstar. not incompetent. <laughs> like, <laughs> if, she, <laughs> if she's... It's she's a like, pretend keypad. Yeah, she's yeah, not she's pretending like, to lock up. She's, like, doing the key motion, like, improvising. <laughs> okay, you're <laughs> insane. No, that's... She's just not doing it because... She's got other things to do. And someone else has to lock up behind her. I know, but I really do think that she likes... I think, first of all, I think this relationship is really good for her. And I think that she likes feeling normal. Like, yeah. she says that in all of her, like, behind the scenes. Any sort of, like, nugget we get from Taylor, she likes cosplaying as a normal girly. But she also is well aware she's not a normal girly. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Which is why I think she, like, really likes hanging out with Brittany Mahomes and the girlies. Like, I think she, like, likes having that connection to, like real life because i think that's also very like it will inspire more shit for her yeah i agree um now there's something that i said that was okay can we talk about her style (laughs) who the fuck is styling taylor swift Um, do you think a taylor is styling taylor no i think that she has a stylist 100 percent, and i think that the stylist is going to be like, okay, this is what I think you should be wearing right now. And Taylor's going to be like, this is the vibe I'm feeling right now. So I'm going to choose X, Y, Z. And then, you know, she gets it. I think it's very interesting to me because it is such normal girl style. Like the other day she was wearing this crocheted top. It's from H and M. She's wearing a lot of free people right now. She's wearing a lot of really hideous shoes that only some, it looks like somebody had like four shoe options in their closet, AKA me. And then like, that's the shoe. That's the only Wait, shoe she which has. Which shoes are ugly. Every single shoe she owns is ugly. Look at all of her shoes. It's not great. What about her like black combat boots? You like those? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Probably cause you literally have the same exact ones. as. <laughs> fine i just like okay it's fine for you and me because like who the fuck are we but like she's the most relevant famous person in the world what would you rather her wear than anything i've heard celebrities talk that they intentionally choose clothes that are like affordable and available and people can know where they're from because they don't want to have other people like us plebeians just being like we i can never do that i can never well that's why i think it might be a marketing ploy because i think that she likes to be like relatable yeah but let's just be a little honest here like maybe in your i don't know what you're doing in your line of work but like in our line of work a lot of things are still just like not that affordable like we're not gonna like what she's wearing it's like oh she was wearing like this skirt that's like 298 dollars it's like yeah, like she's Taylor fucking Swift. I know, but it's like that's still like we are not buying that skirt. Well, you know what I mean? But it's like I'm gonna buy a knockoff, and you better believe I have several items in my closet that are inspired by Taylor Swift's last year and this year um, wardrobe. No. Yes, we cannot be like <laughs> Taylor Swift cannot be our style icon. Too bad. <laughs> you can have whoever you want as your style. Icon. I'm just like it. She should just be like, I think all of her like tour outfits what if, are okay, pretty cool. But what if she doesn't have a, a, a stylist and she's just choosing this on her own? So well, that's the most probable cause. Okay. That's the most probable like so, uh, why situation. Do you, why do you care? Because it's like, it's Taylor Swift and it's fun to talk about. She looks, I think she looks good. She looks good right now. This is a good era for her, but I, I'm just saying like. So why are you complaining if she looks good? Because it's like, it's Taylor Swift. It's like, I want to talk about everything she's doing. What would make you happy for her? Like, what do, what type? For her to look good. But like, (laughs) so what does that mean? You just said she looked good. I think she looks good, but I want her to, I want to like push the boundaries. Like, but here's what I think. Here's my, here's my actual like thought of why she looks the way she looks is because she looks great, but she doesn't look like oh my God, like style icon Taylor Swift. But like, can she be everything? And should she be? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying like, I think that she views like clothes as just like, like, things to cover up her private parts. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like, I think that she doesn't view it as like this 
thing. I think she's so artistic in so many other aspects of her life. And she's like such like a cerebral person. Like she's, she lives in her head. Like her head is like where all the magic happens that I don't think like there's enough energy. Like you can't, God is fair. Like you cannot be the most genius songwriter of all time. One of the best pop stars that our generation and probably multiple generations has ever seen and a style icon like it just like it can't all be true for her do you think you'd be happier if she like fully steve jobbed it and just wore the same thing every day so it would free up her mind maybe okay well because the, she but, kind of is steve's jobbing it though like i no, mean her style if she is like made a made that clear like would that be easier for you to palette be, okay with? Yeah. be like palatable yeah mm-hmm. maybe Okay. You know, what? it's like, who the fuck am I? Like, look, what, look at what I'm wearing. I look like shit. Well, I, I think I'm also just like confused because who people like someone who I think a lot of people do think is a style icon is Kim Kardashian. Right. Mm-hmm. And like never, the, almost never, I don't want to say never, but almost never have I looked at Kim Kardashian's outfits. I, I, I see her. I'm like, she's beautiful. I think she wears things that work for her. Never would I be like, wow, I want to wear that sweatsuit. Okay, I want to wear that like one piece silicone thing. But like she's not trying to sell. But that's anything. not that's not Kim's thing. Kim is like trying to push the envelope as like a tastemaker. So like I think a more reasonable person to compare what I would like to see Taylor in is like Morgan Stewart. I think Morgan Stewart has fantastic style. Where but she, that's like what she cares about. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like it doesn't matter that like. Taylor isn't the style icon, but like, I'm not going to stop talking about her poor cho- shoe choices. Well, here's the thing. It just sounds like you're such a hater. No, you are just such a blind Swifty that any like thing that you're any like sort of tension you're met with, you immediately see Taylor hater. Do you think it sounds like she's a hater? It sounds like she's act- she's wa- she's expecting Taylor to be perfect in every aspect of her life. No. But then if she was perfect in every, she'd be like, yeah, no, it's she's not doing that on her own, obviously. Well, also, I think what Jade is saying that is that she wants to dissect like all the things that Taylor's doing and it, it would be almost boring to talk about everything that Taylor's good at because it's yeah everything 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 but her style is not bad right now like what I do know, you mean but it's also Jade was saying good. that if we're gonna talk about good. everything about Taylor Swift she's gonna have an opinion about it and because every she's Swiftie, judgmental and every <laughs> Swifty wants to talk about everything that she does and so we think that what she wears which everyone's already talking about what she's wearing anyway because it's like black, blue, black, blue, whatever. Yeah, she wants us to talk about her style. Like, she literally tells us, like, I put Easter eggs in my style. So that's what I'm saying. But another thing I wanted to talk about is that um, Blake Shelton gave a speech at Gwen Stefani's um, star ceremony, the Hollywood Walk of Fame star. Did you guys see it? No. I didn't see it, but I saw that it brought a Gwen tear to, to tears. Mind. Okay, well, I, I shared it on my story, and I was, like, crying watching it. And it was so sweet because he was like, when I first met Gwen, she rolled up to the set in a black minivan. And I was like, oh, my God, like this woman's a mom. Like she takes a lot of pride in being a mom. And he's like, I can tell you after getting to know her better, like that is the number one thing that she is. She's a mom. And like he was just saying like the best things about her. And I just like love their relationship. And I didn't think like when you think of them together, it just like feels like it doesn't go. Yeah. But like that's kind of how I think Travis and Taylor might be. I disagree. <laughs> okay, wait. So do we need to get into your thoughts on Travis and Taylor? No, I agree with Travis and Taylor. I I love I love that. I think it's a very weird and not accurate comparison to <laughs> say Gwen and Blake are are like Travis and Taylor. That is what I, I don't get. I think Gwen and Blake are lovely together. I absolutely do and i think taylor and travis make so much sense together but i think that like that saying like oh this pairing is like you would never see these two together and here they are and it's act in like it's working. i'm sorry seeing taylor swift the biggest star in the world with a football player that's like i love it for her because i feel like it like keeps her like connected and grounded to like the people but like her dating a football player is no offense like to travis beneath her but it's like they're both like Tall hotties at the top of their game. But it's like, it's two opposite, like, people. Like, she is not Travis's type, and he is not her type. Okay. So it's, like, very, like, like look at, you can't compare, like, Miranda to Gwen. 
like Blake has always historically been with like super country girls. Gwen has always been with like very like musician, like grungy guys, like the guy in her band, the guy, um, Gavin, what the fuck? I was about to say Gavin, Gavin Rothschild, but it's Gavin. What is his fucking name? Gavin DeGraw. Roth? Gavin. No, <laughs> no, not Gavin DeGraw. <laughs> the guy from Beck. Or Bush, whatever. Anyways, um, Spinner. So anyways, I just feel like it's giving the same energy where it's like two people that are kind of like in different, like such different like planes that like it works because they're able to kind of like see the other ones like shit that they're doing as like super cool. Okay. It's a podcast. So you have to talk. I think the comparison makes sense. Actually. Thank you. They're both in the music industry. But one's in country and one is like in like rock slash pop. Like there's no crossover between Blake and Gwen ever. And when they have, but when they have done crossovers, it's like kind of weird. Like it doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't sound good. I think that I love that it makes sense to you. Okay. (laughs) You know, well, we also have some other uh, things that we need to talk about that I FaceTime page on what day was it? Was it Thursday? I don't know. What day is it today? Um, it's Sunday. 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 It might have been Thursday. I FaceTimed you and I go, guess who is getting a divorce? <sighs> and she said, oh my God, don't say it. And I said, it's one of your girls. She goes, not Marin. Not Marin. <laughs> and I said, it's Marin. Because <laughs> that has been like the last like true relationship that you have kind of held on to, I think. Well, and because that was not only the last little country relationship I was holding on to but it was full 100% real like it was it was so real and I thought that they were so end game that I know it I'm shocked I was I was completely blindsided by I'm it. shocked I'm sad all I have to say is that I don't care what happened in this relationship what went down like I'm going to probably be blindly team Marin. Oh, I mean, obviously, but it's like, I don't even know if it's like something bad on her, but for some reason it's not giving her pro like her doing, but I, but like I, even if it wasn't like team Marin. Yeah. I mean, obviously like always going to be team Marin. That's, that's fine. I really hope what I really, really, really hope I, I'm just going to say, maybe I'm going to sound stupid. I do not know Ryan Hurd, but like, I feel like I do. And I do not think that he is the type of man who would cheat on her, but maybe. I think he cheated on his last girlfriend to be with her. Damn it, really? Yes. And also like, there's no kind of person that's going to cheat. It's just things happen and there's truly, quite literally no need for us to take a side to be team Why? whomever. Why not? Why can't I take a side? You can, team but there's Mary. no need, you know, no. like. Okay, so you're saying um, if, you know, let's say I did something bad in a breakup, you wouldn't take my side? I'm saying that I would still be on (laughs) your side because you're my sister that I know, but I don't know Marin. And I also don't think that it's like, I don't think Marin's the kind of person who would cheat on someone, or I don't think Ryan Hurd's the kind of person who would cheat on someone. Because I'm just saying, like, that is typically, like, what we see the most in the headlines. Like, someone cheated on someone, and now they're getting a divorce. Like, and I don't think, I I did, I didn't, I guess I was wrong. Like, I didn't think that was going to be the reason. I thought it was going to be more so because, like, honestly, I I see a, a better argument that he just isn't, Maybe I guess the better word is like jealous or something. Like, yeah, like it's hers. hard for him to to. Well, it's the Carly Pierce effect. It's the uh, Kelsey Ballerini effect. Now it's the Marin Morris effect. Like these women are such like strong powerhouse like country singers married to other country singers who just like we don't know, but it kind of seems like there's a common theme here that they can't fucking handle it. And that's what it is. And it's like, and I do, I really like, I do like Ryan's music. It's just, it's just not as good as Mary. It's just not as good. And like, he's not, he's not, it just seems like she's doing more. Like she's doing more to like put her music out there to be seen. So oh, so, you mean like a woman's working harder to get like more or like, <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? And, and honestly, I'm not well said. Thank you. <laughs> like with the whole Kelsey and Morgan of it all, it's like, that's just embarrassing. Like that what? he even 
keeps like trying honestly. no like morgan evans imagine being so okay segue we went to acl we went to acl and um Paige and i went to see morgan wade because we obviously we wanted to see kyle richards mm-hmm. and i'm like film we are like we are literally just there to get a glimpse of kyle richards i mean morgan wade is good we have a lot of notes for her S- she was she sounded amazing yeah but there was like she needs like a little extra like spark like a spark or well, a, and sp- a f- you know what's gonna personally <laughs> personally i think like a little a little like crowd conversation would go a long yeah. way a little crowd conversation throw in a cover you you made that point which i thought i was feeling the same thing like you need to kind of like because we're all just standing there we're like oh this person sounds good none of us know the songs but you need to like connect with the crowd a little bit like even when we saw pink last year she did so many covers Mm -hmm. and it was so fucking good it like felt like you were at a live show and it just like re like it re-excites the crowd so it's like you can listen to somebody it's like wow okay like they're really good but i can only get so into it because i i still don't know these songs but if you just end the song with like maybe even 30 seconds or less of a cover that everyone Wait, knows what was the one that you thought it was like i think it was like pearl jam or something oh no it was like, anti-hero oh no what i said what that she karma. should do is karma yeah i said because there was a song that was either called karma or she was saying karma a lot in her song and i was like now what she should have done is at the very end of that song went into taylor swift's karma and because that was the that would have been the vibe like yeah. the people who were there <laughs> everybody um we're back i spilled wine all over jade all over the chair um but you honestly can't even tell you just missed like a little i'll get right here but dawn power wash per, per- oh, honestly takes out the wine yeah so anyways what were we saying bailey age was very passionate about um artist doing something that was why she was gesturing oh, wildly because the foo fighters had shania twain and it was just amazing like that artists was amazing respecting artists we love when artists respect artists but also can we talk about like the way i felt at atlantis <laughs> the way i felt at atlantis like i cried at atlantis like so did I. we all did i think she was so good she was so good she made me feel something I think I just expected to feel at Shania the way I felt at Dixie Chicks. You were just confused by the wig. The chicks. No, I wasn't. The wig didn't bother me. Oh. It was the the choice of her set list. See, her set list didn't bother me. Her set list bothered me a lot. I know. It bothered me too. It did? Talk about wanting to do like connect with the crowd, have a cover. Not. I don't think she even needs a cover. She, she should need a cover. Her no, her fucking song. She wanted that- to connect a little too much with the crowd in my opinion. Honey. honey honey yeah she was like she made us do a lot of crowd work and it's like okay when we saw the dixie chicks they started out with sin wagon the, which chicks. Is, the chicks sorry the chicks they started out with sin wagon <gasps> which was such a good one because it's just like a powerhouse song like they had this like this um uh, montage of like their whole career it got you like super fired up it got them like it got you like in the mood to see the chicks then they came out with sin wagon which is just like such a fucking banger and then they came they did like their songs and then some of them were songs that were like newer songs that weren't just like you know they didn't have like a lot of like uh soul connection to them for me personally um but then they came in and like ended it the last like hour of the show or however long with all of their hits shania starts out with up now up is like sure up is a a hit to shania it is not a banger to start out a fucking festival with like i need not and don't play the song but just like get everyone like excited what all i really wanted was fiddles that i wanted it to be like at the black. end of every song there was a beat and page turn and say fiddles she's like it's gonna be this one fiddles i just thought that would be so cool if it was like because you know the people they're coming out like the techs are coming out to make sure like all of the amps are on everything's good like okay these lights work whatever whatever so you know and then it goes black and then they come up right so it's like if it was black and then you just hear fiddles like i would have lost my freaking mind no but she needed a banger to and i don't think up is a banger it's like up 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 you can only get it just like it didn't hit but here's the reason why it didn't bother me you're comparing it to the chicks right i'm comparing it to 
every other show. But the the thing is that I've ever seen Shania. <laughs> Shania has. This was not a hits Shania show, okay? But it should have been for a festival. What, what do you mean it's not a hit Shania sh- show? She's not like putting out new songs, is she? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then give us the hits. We you were you were Shania Twain. Like we want the hits. She, I also think, is not at a place in her career right now where she's able to just be like super super flexible with everything was very like the choreography everything was very (sighs) routine and that this is what she's doing on her other shows to to play devil's advocate the chicks were on a tour during acl last year too but you chicks were had a really big hiatus okay so there's a lot less music to go through than there is with shania they had a longer sabbatical than we did (laughs) they the chicks i don't know i'm just saying like i had such high hopes for shania especially like i had high hopes going into it but then especially after seeing alanis i was like these are two of the people like honestly 1995 that year for me was alanis Shania, then Bailey Brown. I was gonna say another really important thing. <laughs> another happened. really important thing happened to me in 1995, and that's my that's when my sister was born. And it was chronologically and by importance. In no, no, that no. Order. Actually, I think it was Alanis. It was probably Spice Girls, Alanis, oh, Shania, yeah. then Bailey. <laughs> yeah. No offense. No, we, like, we just didn't know you. Yet. No, honestly, Spice Girls consumed our entire world. Like, yeah, we were. Which is obsessed. why is it Your so hard Spice to world. find that movie? Spice World? It's so hard to... It was on Netflix. Really? It was. I know it was on Amazon. It was, but now it's... I was trying to... I was trying to watch it. It, Kind of (laughs) recently, like in the last couple years, and it was so hard to find. That movie is such a banger. That is one of the best movies of our childhood by far. One of my favorite scenes is... So it's right after the, come on, come on, and yeah. then the alien scene. The alien scene because where it, he grabs the boob. It doesn't fit, but it's so funny. Well, the whole movie is just so, like, wacky. And it's just, like, it's such a fun movie for kids, especially, like, all five of their personalities are so different, and they really play into that. And as kids, like, you just love characters. And then, like, when they would dress up as the other person, and when they dressed up as like other uh, like famous people like Marilyn Monroe and like Twiggy and all of that, like that was such an iconic scene. When they did like the army scene, was I really love fun. the army. Love scene. The army scene, we we loved the army scene, and and, then, and I I I loved the the restaurant scene, like the it was like where, where they first like kind of like got together um mm-hmm. when it was like all closed and they're like this is what we want to do and then they sing like wannabe like i oh when it was like the the, the, um, the, pr- the throwback scene yes yes i mean every part of that movie was just like perfectly made for girls who are obsessed with spice girls but you know what scene i did not like what <laughs> the the boat scene Oh yeah, because you were scared. I w- it was too stressful. Well, it was stressful, and it was kind of like annoying to watch like other girls living your dream hanging yeah. out with the Spice Girls, and they're mm-hmm. like screaming because it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. But that that movie is a ten out of ten. Have you guys seen Beckham? Not no. Yet. You have to see Beckham. It's so good. It just like took me back to like how big the Spice Girls were. I was watching it with Mr. Roberts last night. And he was like, oh my God, like they've been together since like 1996. I was like, yeah, they've been together forever. They they were showing this like clip of her at one of his games. And they were like, Victoria Adams was there. I was like, oh my God, I forgot her name was Victoria Adams. Like she's, Vi- I was just about to say who's Victoria <laughs> Adams. <laughs> but it's like so funny because she is so Victoria Beckham. Like, well, and with the Spice Girls, she was only Victoria. Victoria. I'm like, sorry, I have to do this. I never, I, cause it was, they all kind of, it was either an initial, but it was mainly like a first name. Jerry, baby. baby. Mel B, Mel C, and Victoria. Yeah. It's like funny that like Emma was never Emma. Emma. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Okay. So should we do some sister stories? I think we should do at least one. Yeah. Because guys, there's still so much that we do need to catch you up on. And we will. um, We just need a couple episodes to do it. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. You want to be in my gang, my gang. Like, where is that song? I know. You want to be in my gang. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. 
Taylor Swift's uh, album is coming out this week as well. I know. We're getting new vault songs. I'm gonna lose my mind. These vault songs are gonna slap so fucking hard. Because you think Carter than Red? Yes. 1989 was such a banger. It, was, it really changed the game. The reason it's not my favorite album is because... It, most of those songs were just so overplayed on the radio that it's like, okay, yeah, we get it. But these new songs are going to be amazing. I honestly think that even though like Blank Space is one of the most like overplayed songs ever, like I, I really don't get tired of Blank Space. It's really exciting every time it comes on. I know. No matter what you're doing. It's like Cruel Summer. Like I kind of can't get tired of Cruel Summer. Yeah. I still haven't gotten tired of Cruel Summer. Bailey and I were talking earlier today about Blank Space, uh, about 1989 because I was like, do you remember? Because that was the the first album that I really, really, really wanted to learn the harmonies to like every song. So I would force, so if I want to learn a harmony to a song, I force Bailey to sing the lead mm-hmm. and so I would be like, my arm, you know, I'm like, let's do it again. Let's do it again. No, I hate from the top. I hated you guys kind of made me like turn me off to 1989 solely from the song. I, 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 no, you guys sang it constantly. Cause it's so, no, you would run into the house and like the first thing you would do would be turning on that because it's so good. And then Bailey reminded me that that was like one of the main like road trip songs. If we would, road trip three and a half hours to mom and dad's house (laughs) but we would play the whole album and talk about what we'd be doing so if it was all i had to do was stay you know that song okay so bailey's gonna be in a box and you're not gonna see her and paid is gonna be up and she's gonna be singing and then once it says stay like i would like pop out of the box like we had like stage directions for all of the songs so it sounds like we might need to film one of our little choreographed dances it sounds like you guys need to get in touch with taylor because she has some production notes that she needs to take These she should like, get in a box she should get yeah. in a box <laughs> okay uh, anyways i'm really excited for it so do you want to read us a story yeah okay this is an advice okay, okay. do you guys feel particularly wise right now i or feel 100 percent ready to advise okay good hey sisters hi hey I'm looking for some advice about a girl who definitely does not like me. So I'm in college and have a friend. I have a friend group of girls and guys. One of the guys got this girlfriend a few months ago, and I can tell she really doesn't like me. She's always texting the other girls and says hello and goodbye to them. But she never talks to me unless I go up to her and try to have a conversation. Many other people have even asked me what I did to offend the new girl because it's obvious she is not a fan of me. I asked the other girls in the group what I could have done, and they are just as unsure as I am. I I genuinely cannot think of one thing that I could have done. I've tried making plans with her to hang out to get to know each other better, but she never follows through. So what do you guys think I should do? Thanks. Okay, this person just, like, doesn't like you, and there's no need to try to, like, force yourself on them. The best plan of action you can do is just keep living your life having fun being you and hopefully she'll come around and if she doesn't that's like on her but like you kind of are in like a good power position because like you are in the group because you're friends with everyone like she's only in the group because that's her boyfriend's friends yeah the more attention you give it and the more life you breathe into it is only going to make it a thing if it's just i'm hanging out with my friends and this girl is here and she's welcome then cool but if it's like oh my gosh sarah is never talking to jane and then it's a thing then yeah just it it becomes more of a big deal yeah and it sounds like you it sounds like obviously you care because why does this girl not like you but but to jade's points like you don't need to care that much you're not doing anything if anything the you're going out of your way to try to hang out with this person to see what's going, you know, to try to get to know her better. Um, she just doesn't like you. And that happens. And I think that you just need to do what Jade's saying. Like you're hanging out with your friends. You're not going out of your way to make her feel uncomfortable. And yeah, I would like, I would definitely not go out of your way in any way. I wouldn't be like going out of your way to like be mean or to be nice. I think I would just like let it be. And then if she talks to you, you acknowledge it. Like if it makes sense for you to address her, like address her. Yeah, but like, if it feels right, then you can say like, 
hey like i feel like we're not as close as the other girls like is there a reason why i i personally would kind of like let it sit for a little bit no i agree i'm saying if the if there's a perfect situation and yeah you're itching well this actually reminds me of something that happened to me back in the day one of my guy friends had a girlfriend at the time and they were always around and she just like would never acknowledge me she fucking hated me she did not want to be around me it's because she thought that like i was like like had something to do with like maybe like a past girl he had like i don't know Mm. had a dalliance with and so i was just like the symbol of that to her like even though i didn't do it i was just like the symbol of it and i just like took my time i was patient eventually she came around and now she's like one of my very closest friends so it's like or yeah or or, um remember when i went to visit bb Mm -hmm. like that girl loves him like that girl likes him so much so she was never going to give me the time of day you know what i mean because i was there visiting him so that could be in that situation you were our listener exactly so i'm saying like i'm saying this girl wait hold on what am i saying no in that situation you were the listener and then like the girl wasn't going to give you the time of day but like you could still apply it to no matter what situation you're in. Oh, I think my my whole point is like, what if this girl doesn't? What if this girl thinks that she, like that our listener is like threat, threat, liked yeah, she's a threat or she liked him or something or that like whatever that may be. It's like that's the only thing I can truly think of that why this person wouldn't like you because like why would she care if she's friends with all the other girls? Like she either like has made up something in her mind like maybe you're like super fucking hot i mean if you're listening to this podcast you probably are Mm -hmm. so or what if your her her boyfriend what if he was like what if she's like oh have you ever like dated any of your friends and he's like no but like i always had a crush on like that one or whatever yeah like you don't know what he's told her so she's probably the only reason why girls usually act like that is from some sort of like insecurity And it's based off of like usually a guy making you insecure. Like I feel like rarely at that age do you just like go after a girl for no reason. Like it's always like because of a fucking guy. Especially if she's friends with all of the other girls. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So I think you give her a little grace because like she is we've all been there. We've all like felt a little insecure about Mm -hmm. like another girl because like a guy has kind of made that situation feel insecure sorry to blame the guys but like it's usually their fault and Mm -hmm. so us women we need to like start thinking like in this like high level way where it's like oh okay like let's give each other like a little bit of grace on both sides like you're that girl needs to be giving you a little bit of grace because you obviously don't know what's going on and there's probably like something going on yeah I agree. It has been such a delight (laughs) to be back. I feel like this is kind of like, you know, back to like our OG days. Like we were giggling, we were laughing, we were talking through our fights. Um, So we have some exciting things, hopefully in the works for us. So you know what to do, please. You know what? Now more than ever, we need you to share this episode with your friends. Um, Just like take your friend's phone, play this episode they don't need, you don't even need to subscribe for them. Just like play this episode. Like all we need to do is play the episodes. And then, and if you listen to it once, you can listen to it twice. Yeah, exactly. Or if you're listening to it once on Apple, you can listen to it on Spotify or YouTube or whatever. There's three different ways you can listen to us each week. Mm -hmm. So rate us five stars or, you know, give us a four star. Nope. Five. (laughs) Okay, five. And then um, make sure you're subscribed. You're following Your Poor Dad Pod on TikTok and Instagram. And write into us. Write into us. Your Poor Dad at gmail.com. And anything that you've ever wanted to tell your sister, if you wish you had a sister, anything embarrassing, anything funny, anything you wish, like, oh my God, was this a weird interaction that I had or not? Yeah. And we'll be there to tell you if it's a weird interaction or not just the way we would tell each other. But like the thing is when you tell your sister, it's like you have like, it's easier to tell somebody that is your sister because then you can like laugh about it. And then it's like, you can all move on together. Yeah, Cause it's like, no matter what you say, you know that they're still stuck with you at in the end. Yeah. Like even better for you, you're anonymous. We can just laugh with you right through it. And it's like, 
when I do something that's so embarrassing, you guys are the first people I tell because it just like kind of like makes it less like it like brings it down a notch mm-hmm. in the embarrassing scale because then we can all laugh about it and it's like we all know about it. So yeah. Yeah. But all okay. right. So um your poor dad at gmail.com. Oh yeah. Um your poor dad pod on Instagram. Okay. Right? Yeah. Is that right? Mm-hmm. You did it. Do yeah. that. Bye. 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 Bye.